Welcome to White Hat Security's HackerCast. My name is Jeremiah Grossman. I am the CEO of White Hat, and I'm with Gabriel Gums and Robert Hanson, also of White Hat. And today we're at, uh, we're at Levi Stadium for a 49er field over here. So it's a, it's a nice place to talk about web security <laughs> and uh, give the current events on the week and what's going anyway. on out there. Yeah, it's a, it's a Go good Niners. place. <laughs> Yeah, Gabe's from New York. I don't know if he's ready for the Niners. I'm a, I'm a laugh. <laughs> uh, so today, so we, what, what stories we got this week? We saw so one called busy, called Poodle. We had the Poodle vulnerability released. Uh, it's it's a padding issue with uh, SSL. Um, there's uh, basically uh, an issue that allows a man in the middle to downgrade the connection of, of uh, a client and server from TLS 3.0 all the way down to, to known vulnerable versions of, of SSL, um, which we know that it, it leaks some information um, and could allow an attacker to, uh, to steal sessions. So, so, so you have to be a man in the middle. So SSL, like V3, you have to be a man in the middle. And then you read, I think it was like what, session cookies or something yeah. like that. Yeah, right. you can basically read a lot of the session information and take them over. That's the one good thing about the vulnerability, if you can call it that, is you do have to be a man in the middle. So it's not as bad as the last two major issues we've seen in, in the last couple of weeks and months, um, namely Shellshock and uh, and the, the Bash Bug. Um, and that's the same one, I'm sorry. Yeah, um, Harpleen. Yeah, right, right. So it's, it's not quite as bad. This is not a remote exploit in that sense, but it is still very critical in the sense that, you know, if, if you're surfing the web at uh, Starbucks, Starbucks or, or any open... Like, like we all do. <laughs> like we all do. <laughs> any open do. Wi-Fi, yeah, which you really like should be doing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then this, those are the places where you're likely to be targeted for such vulnerability. No, no, I thought it was like all the old algorithms, like SSL v3, I mean, it's about like 15 years. Yeah. 1996 yeah. is when that was released. <laughs> yeah, so it's it's been it's been long deprecated, and SSL in particular, in that fashion, has been uh, over, oh, not written, but, but it's been deprecated for, for TLS in, in the browser sense. So it's definitely, um, it's, it's, it's not that... It's not that this is something known. That is, it's not that it's a vulnerability in an existing used protocol. But the way the web works and the way browsers work, because there's so much old infrastructure out there, we're still forced to support these old versions. And so your browser essentially says, "All right, I can't support TLS 3.0, so I'm going to go down. To, I'm going to go down to SSL 3.0, and then that's the problem." So something called Poodle is going to get rid of IE6 finally. Okay. <laughs> we can only hope. I don't know about that. <laughs> we can only hope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, so we got that. We're going to put the uh, so white hat. We're going to put the checks in this morning. So we'll see what comes up. We did. Uh, we know uh, three thousand already. Three thousand. Yeah. Okay, that's not good. Uh, <laughs> and then I think Akamai is going to put some deprecate their stuff over there. We saw Google Chrome is going to update it. They're going to kill it there. I think Firefox is going to do it also. Firefox Sorry, also. Yeah. 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 So. Indeed. And there is some information on the web. We also put some information up on our blog on how you can uh, mitigate the issue on the, on the client side if you're worried about that and on the server side. So, well, yeah, so go to the blog, deprecate all the SSLB3 stuff. Then you have another one. Uh, which one was that? Some kind of Windows? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, for those familiar with uh, Linux, uh, if you, if you like, create a file that's like dash something and you say rm star in that directory, it'll it'll convert the dash something into command switches for <laughs> for whatever command you're just talking about. This is pretty similar to that. Um, in some cases, environmental variables that get put in batch files can be used to escape and do all kinds of horrible things. So basically, all of, it's really simple. All it is is an ampersand followed by a command, which is oh, terrible. Yeah. So you cd to wherever the environmental variable is, and then it's like, and then run whatever command. So it's very easy to exploit. Uh, you know, Although... Typically, you're not going to have to comp- uh, encode that and so it doesn't it isn't treated as a parameter separate or whatever. So right. it's a set 26 or whatever. So how does this get exploited? This didn't look like a web phone. Like, what is well, this? Well, it could be. So if somebody um, writes something to a file and then that is then bat- put into a batch job on a Windows box, it could actually be turned into an actual web file. Huh. Uh, I think it's pretty low likelihood and batch files in that way, but I'm sure, I guarantee you, there's something yeah. out there exploitable to this. So what was the fix? Was it a patch? Is there a fix? Or uh, Not really. They don't. It's not really their fault. Uh, it's because, uh, yeah. It's intended functionality. It's intended it's functionality, yeah. They're like, they're like, effectively, it's a, it's you a need, feature, not a bug. A feature. Okay, you need to parse your input, is what they're saying. Yeah. So. <laughs> That's interesting. So the two issues this week are both 
features, not bugs in that sense. I mean, the, 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 the fact that browsers have to be forced to communicate downward for, for interoperability and, and this feature. Yeah, the feature. <laughs> well, feature. Well, there was that one, that one other third one, though. There was the third one this week, the, uh, the Drupal SQL injection vulnerability and the Drupal core. So yeah, it's very, much, very much a bug. Yeah, yeah. And the, the cool part about that one, if you guys read the report, it was in the library that specifically was meant to prevent SQL <laughs> injection. Nice. So, 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 and it can lead to command injection, and too. And it can lead to command injection. So, for all, so Drupal's pretty popular. Super extremely I've popular. heard of it. I've heard yeah. of it. Yeah. <laughs> Normally, see these bugs in like plugins and things, but this is Drupal Core, and it's unauthenticated. Yeah. So we're talking like mass blast to the internet. So, yeah. so if you're running Drupal, stop. No, <laughs> stop. <laughs> no you upgraded to seven point three eight, I think. It's right. Right. So we'll get we'll get the checks in on that one and, and mass that scan. affect quite a, a large number of, yeah. of sites. I mean, it's a it's very popular platform. People are going to get hacked on that yeah, one. Absolutely. That's yeah, absolutely. that's gonna that's that's speed execution right there. <laughs> So is that it? Is that everything we got this yeah, week? Hacker, hacker oh, oh yeah, yeah. Hacker hacker combat. So Hacker Combat six at Whitehead. This is our uh, our quarterly company event where we do capture the flag web hacking style at Whitehead. We have over sixty combatants. We're going to stream this one live on Twitch. So you probably, I think there's going to be a recording. So we'll put the links and everything on the video. But this is going to be awesome. We got all the t-shirts made. Uh, I'm leading a team. Robert's on the noob team. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't go any better. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, throw straws on that. <laughs> no, it's, no, it's the draft. You're picking last in the draft. <laughs> so, uh, all right. So this has been episode HackerCast. Thank you, everybody. Thank yeah. you. Thanks.